Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. The topic of this presentation is remove some noise on preprocessing of side channel measurement with autoencoders. The authors are Li Chao Wu and Stefan Pistak from Delft University of Technology, the Netherlands. The outline of the presentation now. First, we introduce the background of the side channel analysis and denoising autoencoder. Then, we validate and benchmark our denoising method with different evaluation settings, such as white box settings and black box settings. And finally, we move to the conclusion and future works. So what is side channel analysis? Assuming we have the hardware that can run the encryption algorithm, to encrypt the plain text, we feed the plain text to the hardware, then the hardware runs the encryption algorithms and eventually output the ciphertext. However, when the hardware is processing the encryption algorithm, encryption or data-related information can be leaked by different sources, such as power consumptions, EM radiations, acoustic sound, or temperature. The side channel analysis can be considered as a time series classification problem. The goal of the side channel analysis is to classify the traces by learning and analyzing the correlation between the traces values and the data being processed. Once this process is finished, together with the understanding of the encryption algorithm, the original plain text can be retrieved by an attacker. Side channel analysis has been proved to be successful in various devices and encryption algorithms. To enhance the security level of the device, the developer introduces different types of countermeasures when performing the critical functions. The countermeasures can be implemented in both hardware and software levels, which can be normally characterized into hiding and masking. Masking split the sensitive intermediate values into different shares to decrease the key dependency. Hiding, on the other hand, aims to reduce the side channel information by adding randomness to the leakage signals or making it constant. This paper focuses on dealing with hiding noise. There are several approaches in dealing with the individual type of countermeasures or noise. For instance, using averaging to remove the Gaussian noise, using static alignments to deal with the misalignment. Indeed, Removing a single type of noise or countermeasure could be possible by smartly select the correct denoising method. However, we still miss a more general approach in fighting with noise. Moreover, when they are combined, which is normal in the real world, they become more difficult to deal with. The motivation of this paper is to develop an effective method that can be used to denoise various types of noise and countermeasures, as well as a combination of them. To achieve this goal, we use the autoencoder. An autoencoder consists of two parts, encoder and decoder. Unlike other neural network architectures that map the relationship between the input and labels, an autoencoder transforms input into output with the least possible amount of distortion. The most representative input features are forced to be kept into the small, smallest layer in the network, which is in the middle of this graph. Benefit from this unsupervised learning characteristic, an autoencoder is applicable uh, in settings such as data compressions, anomaly detections, and image recovery. When applying the autoencoders for the denoising purpose, the input and output are not identical but present by the presented by the noisy clean data pairs. A similar idea can also be applied to remove the countermeasures from the leakage traces. A well-trained denoising autoencoder can keep the most representative information and in its in its latent space while neglecting other random factors. Since the original noiseless noiseless traces can be recovered by fitting noisy traces into the autoencoder's input, one can expect that the attack efficiency will be significantly improved with the recovered traces. So, to implement the denoising autoencoders, we design the denoising strategies for different settings, as we mentioned before, the white box settings and black box settings. We will first cover the white box settings. In terms of validation and benchmarks, we simulated several types of hiding countermeasures and noise. We present some of typical results 
which is the first full countermeasures in this presentation. The details of the rest three can be found in the paper. As discussed in the previous slide, we require noise noisy clean traces pair to train the denoising autoencoder. For practical attack scenarios, the biggest challenges for this strategy is how to obtain the clean traces. The application of denoising autoencoder is intuitive if we consider the black box settings. In our context, we assume an attacker with full control of the device, we call it device A. Specifically, he can enable or disable the implemented countermeasures. To attack the real device with the countermeasures enabled, we call it device B. He first requires traces uh, with and without the countermeasures from device A to build the training set. Then, the attacker uses these traces to train the denoising autoencoder. Once the training process is finished, the trained model can preprocess the leakage traces uh, obtained from the device B. Finally, with a clean or at least cleaner traces reconstructed by the denoising autoencoder, an attacker could eventually retrieve the secret information with less effort. Know that this denoising strategy cannot be di directly applied to the black box settings considering the difficulties in disabling the black box settings countermeasures. Following these strategies, we demonstrate the effectiveness of the autoencoder by removing different types of noise and countermeasures. First, we remove the most common noise, the Gaussian noise. Here, Gaussian noise is simulated with mean of zero and standard deviation of weight. Several attack methods, such as template attack, PCA-based template attack, deep learning attack including multilayer perceptrons and convolutional neural network, as well as convolutional neural network with added noise to the input layer as a regulation factor, are used to perform the attack based on these noisy traces. As can be seen from the attack result, which is shown in, on the right of this slide, the uh, principal component analysis-based template attack performs the best indicating that PCA could be an effective method to remove the Gaussian noise. However, none of the attack method is able to retrieve the key within 10,000 traces. Next, we try to remove the Gaussian noise with traces averaging as well as denoising autoencoder proposed in this paper. From the attack perspective, the get entropy converges in the both cases when the number of the traces increase. After denoising with either uh, averaging or denoising autoencoder, the attack performs significant, uh, performance is significantly improved over the noisy versions. Next, we move to the syn uh, synchronization. The well synchronized traces can significantly improve the correlation of the intermediate data. The alignment of the traces is therefore an essential step for the side channel attack. Different from Gaussian noise, the desynchronization of the traces add randomness to the time domain. To show the effect of the traces of desynchronization, we use traces with a maximum of 50 points of desynchronization, then attack them with different method. As shown in the result, result none of them is successful in retrieving the key within 10,000 attack traces. Next, we attack the denoised traces preprocessed by static alignment or denoising autoencoder. Now that static alignment is a well-known method uh, to, to, to align the traces, so we use a static alignment to benchmark with our denoising autoencoder. From the result, the gas entropy of the traces processed by the denoising autoencoder converges faster than the static aligned traces indicating that the denoising autoencoder could be a generic approach to synchronize the traces. By training the denoising autoencoder with the synchronized, synchronized traces pairs, the model can automatically align the traces. Also, we see the effectiveness of the denoising autoencoder in dealing with the noise in the time domain. To further demonstrate this effect, we play with the random delay interrupts and other countermeasures normally present in the, in the traces as a countermeasures. Unlike the desynchronization that introduces a global time randomness to the entire traces, 
The random delay interrupts, on the other hand, lead to the time randomness locally. As a type of countermeasure typically implemented in the software, the existence of the random delay interrupts break the traces into fragments, thus significantly increasing the randomness of the traces in the time domain and reducing the correlation of the attack in the media data. We simulate random delay interrupts based on the floating mean method. The implementation details can be found in the paper. From the result, both five attack methods are not powerful enough to extract the useful patterns and retrieve the key. Here, frequency analysis is used to benchmark with denoising autoencoders. With frequency analysis, the guessing entropy slowly decreases when using uh, the convolutional neural network or template attack for the attack. On the other hand, the effect of the random delay interrupts has been reduced dramatically with the help of the denoising autoencoder. The guessing entropy converges significantly faster when attacking with template attack, multilayer perceptrons, and convolutional neural network. Note that the attack result with CNN and MLP are close to one with the original data set. In other words, the attack performance is really close to the attack result when attacking the original clean data set. Therefore, we can conclude that the denoising autoencoders can effectively, effectively recover the original traces from the noise traces with RDI countermeasures. Next, we investigate an extreme situation by adding all five uh, noise and countermeasures discussed in the paper and uh, trying to verify the denoising autoencoders approach's effectiveness. Since there are no specific approaches in reducing the effect of combined noise sources, we evaluate guessing entropy of the noise, noisy traces and traces after applying frequency analysis and denoising autoencoder. From the result, as expected, the attack method used in this paper, I mean the both, both five attack method, cannot obtain the correct key within 10,000 traces. More precisely, the noisy traces could not converge with the increasing number of the traces. Note that there would be a fewer countermeasures combined, uh, combined in the traces in the realistic settings, so the traces will be less noisy. In such cases, we expect that the proposed denoising autoencoder's performance would be better, as evident from the scenarios when handling only only a single type of countermeasure. Now we try to denoise it with uh, frequency analysis and the denoising autoencoder. In terms of the denoising performance, the frequency analysis is not working when dealing with a combination of noise and countermeasures. The guessing entropy of denoise traces with the denoising autoencoder, on the other hand, reaches 27 with 10,000 traces when using the convolutional neural network which means that the denoising autoencoder doubles the perform attack performance when compared with the frequency analysis. Indeed, the attack performance convert uh, the attack performance converts slower than the denoise traces uh, uh, for uh, than, than for the denoise traces with single type of noise, but denoising autoencoder still proves its capabilities in removing the combined effect of noise and countermeasures. Then, we verify the denoising autoencoder's performance by trying to denoise the traces with random keys. To retrieve the correct keys from the decayed traces, we first train the models with leakage with random but known keys. Then use the trained models to attack the leakage <coughs> and try to retrieve the key. From the attack result, the guessing entropy of the noisy traces fluctuate above 100 regardless of number of traces, indicating that the both five attack method is not successful. On the, on the other hand, the gas entropy indicates improved performance as a result of frequency analysis and denoising autoencoder. For the best cases shown in the figures, uh, the denoising autoencoder doubles the attack performance compared with its counterpart. Finally, we conclude that the proposed denoising autoencoder can denoise a leakage in a fixed and random case scenario 
when the result are especially good when using the convolutional neural network as an attack mechanism. After cover the denoising strategies for the white box settings, then we try to uh, cover the denoising strategy for the black box settings. We will first talk about the denoising strategies, then we will have to demonstrate change to show the effectiveness of this strategy. Now, we investigate the potential of the denoising autoencoder in the black box settings. As mentioned before, the denoising strategy for the white box settings cannot be directly applied be, cannot be directly applied because of the difficulties in disabling the black box settings countermeasure. Fortunately, the denoising autoencoder can denoise the traces even when the reference traces are not entirely clean. The less noisy traces generated by the traditional denoising method can also be used as clean traces for the denoising autoencoder's training. Here, the, attack can, uh, the attacker can not obtain the clean measurement, but he can apply other denoising techniques like averaging or spectral analysis to reduce the influence of the noise and countermeasures. Then, he can use the noisy, less noisy traces pair to train the denoising autoencoder. While this approach is not realistic for all countermeasures, we show it works for several of them. Even if we train the autoencoder for different types of noise simultaneously, it is successful when we apply the settings to that do not use all types of noise. Here we show the first demonstrations. We try to denoise the Gaussian noise and desynchronization with noisy less noisy traces pair. For the Gaussian noise, the less noisy traces pair is generated by the averaging. And for the desynchronization, the less noisy traces is generated by the static alignment. Compared with the denoise traces using the original clean traces as a reference, the noise to less noise cases attack performance is reduced. However, we still see the performance of denoising autoencoders, indicating that by training in this method, the denoising autoencoder can indeed reduce the effect of the noise and the countermeasures. Finally, we denoise the traces with Gaussian noise and desynchronization in a combined setting. More precisely, 10,000 traces pair with Gaussian noise, which is noisy to average, and 10,000 traces pair with desynchronization, which is noisy to static aligned, are combined and used to use for training the denoising autoencoder. Based on the result, the joint training method lead to comparable or even better performance than the previous result on the single noise house. The result again shows that the denoising autoencoder model can learn and remove different types of noise simultaneously. More precisely, we can train the denoising autoencoder to remove various types of noise and it will work even if we, the, the traces that do not the traces do not have all type of noise house. Finally we move to the conclusions and future works. In this presentation, we introduce the convolutional autoencoders or denoising autoencoders to remove the noise and countermeasures from the leakage traces. The obtained result shows that the proposed denoising autoencoder can remove and reduce the noise and determines underlying the ground truth, ground truth and eventually improve the attack performance. Our approach is especially powerful for the white box settings, but we demonstrate it has the potential also in the black box setting. We believe it is especially interesting to consider uh, the denoising autoencoder as a generate de uh, denoiser technique, since our results indicate it gives good result. Well, it's super easy to apply it. Our results show that autoencoder reliably, reliably uh, remove the noise and countermeasures, even if the measurements do not contain all noise sources the autoencoder used in the training process. Denoising autoencoder provides an attacker with a powerful tool to prepare the traces. For the future work, we expect this technique could help uh, with problems like probability. 
With the help of the autoencoder, this problem can be solved by considering the trace is variation as noise and use denoising autoencoders to remove it. Additionally, the trained denoising autoencoder could be used to for further transfer learning. For example, the encoder part of the autoencoder could be further trained and used to launch the attacks. Finally, we will apply, we plan to investigate further denoising, whether, uh, whether the denoising autoencoder could also work for the masking countermeasures. Thank you for your attention.